Welcome to Bex Bug Out Survivor. A lot of people have been asking that they want to get into hammocking. A lot of people will ask what hammock they should choose. And I always say, well, don't worry about your hammock because you're going to have a pretty lousy night in any hammock if it's not insulated properly. This is my little 20 quid hammock. It's only 2 meters 80. Um, and I can get a good night's sleep with the right insulation and just a couple of sleeping bags. I've got the British Army modular system, which is two part. I've got the cheapest tree webbing, pretty good beaners actually. But I just want to show people who are starting hammocking, maybe for the first time, to really concentrate on the insulation, not the hammock. A lot of people think you can just put a sleeping bag inside a hammock get in it for the night well your insulation underneath you is going to be compressed and the convection effect is going to draw energy from underneath your body which is why people have under quilts I have a few under quilts I'm only doing this video to demonstrate and help people who want to start hammocking and only have say a basic hammock basic understanding of hammocking now two sleeping bags here like a sleeping bag modular system is going to work a lot better here because we are talking about preserving airspace which is free insulation i'm going to bring the daisy through the loop draw that to a tree quite going to reach so I can go to a lower loop on this side I always have one of the tree straps a lot lower than the other tree strap and the tree strap with the higher height is where my feet go I don't actually make much height adjustment for the hammock by altering the suspension if I can help it I try and get my hammock level then alter the head and foot on the tree itself if I was to lie here for the night even in the sleeping bag um, it wouldn't take me long to get cold and someone in the comments even told me that they had a big thick sleeping bag um, so he doesn't need an under quilt or a pad or an inflatable or any insulation underneath him um, of course when I put the challenge forward to go out in winter for over 12 hours uh, that offer was declined didn't seem to want to do it but uh, trust me convection will rob your heat no matter how big or great your sleeping bag is. So I'm going to insulate mine with my small sheepskin, which I like. And I'm going to incorporate two parts of my army sleeping bag, which is the light one on the outside, side zip first, lay the insulation inside that, um, and then my big thick sleeping bag goes over. Now there's two ways to do this. I'm gonna show you both and throw in a few tips to make it a lot more comfortable for the night. Starting with my lightweight bag, just gonna lay it in the hammock. If you have a side zip sleeping bag like this one, get the zip and bring it in line with the edge of your hammock. Edge of the hammock, 
zip bring them both more or less together like that and then that way when you get in your zip doesn't disappear underneath your body stretch it out and put your insulation in this first bag here now you don't need this particular model of sleeping bag any two sleeping bags will do this the reason we're using two like we said earlier is to trap dead air space you can do it with one I've done it I wished I'd have had my under quilt as well as a sleeping bag but another alternative is to trap dead air mine's in a dry sack here this is a single it's about 800 grams and in its diameter here it's not a million miles bigger than my army roll pad in diameter and as you can see it's a lot shorter that fits either at the bottom of your pack or just on top under the hood like that hardly takes up any room misconception is that with these they're heavy and bulky I don't think they are if you can keep your rest of your pack weight down even better shelter insulation cook set just think that and you, you'll be surprised um, you know you can have a comfortable night's sleep with what is usually considered uh, quite heavy 800 grams for this 800 or rather 900 and 40 grams for my winter under quilt and this will go down to winter as well now I'm gonna put this in um, this way up you can do it with the leather tan side up that is great for winter having it tan side against your body there mine has a wider end than the other so foot end for me is there shoulder here and just lay that into the sleeping bag now at this point it's going to be a bit of trial and error to get this um, you know quite comfortable without the ruffles under your back it's not as straightforward as my under quilts but then on saying that I do have to make adjustments also on my under quilts if I'm dialing it into a different hammock than I used last time for instance but this is just a quick show and tell for people who want to get into hammocking I may just have a couple of sleeping bags and either a yoga pad or a sheepskin like this loads of people love the sheepskin videos uh, want to know more you can get them on a car boot for around 10 quid. Mine's brand new, which is about just under 100. But I bet you if you have a look around on some of these sites, you can get them quite cheap at uh, these auction sites or something like that. I'm gonna pull this right up to my shoulders and pull the sleeping bag down at the feet. Get rid of any debris, of course. And just get in and test this because I'm filming it I'm actually slowing things down to make it a little easier to comprehend but once you've made your adjustments the second time you do this you'll be well aware of how to set this up uh, your preferred lay in it so nothing ruffles up under your shoulders or anything and I fully expect at this point now to be making some of these alterations it comes to just under the back of my knee that sheepskin and I roll from my left side to my right to make these alterations one thing you don't want to do is the crab which is holding onto your hammock and lifting your backside up it's not very stable So roll to this side to the other right I'm happy with that now any sleeping bag you're gonna use in a hammock 
is going to shorten by its nature of being bent in the middle even if you lay, lay diagonally in your hammock they call it a flat lie it, it's not a, a true flat lie like being on the floor with uh, an air pad for instance it, it's nowhere near comparable but most hammockers will tell you they're lying flat but if you look carefully underneath you'll find they are dipping and bananaing I want to make sure I've got plenty of this plush uh, sheepskin under the back of my neck and over my shoulders and that's good enough for me I grab my big fat sleeping bag now mine is a central zip and this really helps with a hammock in not so much it's easier to get in and out the fact you can use them like a quilt central zip sleeping bag I undo it I've got um, a new zip I've sewn onto mine and I take it almost to the bottom of the foot unzipped this is where my feet go in here and this now becomes a blanket that I just loosely put over the top of me and this outer bag is just being zipped up now with any bivvy system, any sleeping bag you want to make sure there's no air getting in between the front of the sleeping bag and your neck regardless of your sleeping bag you need a good baffle this doesn't have a baffle so I pull this outer bag into the inside bag like that okay so why didn't I put the sheepskin in first and the sleeping bags on top surely that would have been easier fact of the matter it's not because now I need to get my diagonal lay and although my sleeping bag can go diagonal it means I'll keep having to adjust the sheepskin by getting in and out and in and out of the hammock to adjust now it's in the sleeping bag with me that sheepskin it comes with me wherever I go so I'm going to adjust having my feet from the right side to the left side and as you can see I can move myself towards the foot end of the hammock or away from the foot end position myself to any diagonal lay I want now remember it's only a two meter 80 hammock I'm not going to be able to get as much a diagonal lay as say my 11 foot hammock but this is cozy when it comes to using your hoods don't in hammocks with sleeping bags this is what happens in the middle of the night you'll automatically find the middle of your hammock and one of two things is going to happen your toes are going to be squashed against the bottom of your sleeping bag and pushing your toenails right in when you've got your hood on because in, in effect you've shortened your sleeping bag and another thing that may occur if that isn't happening with your toes is your hood feels so tight it's compressed hard on your head now what I prefer to do is put something else in the hood and stuff it and use it like a pillow instead and if you notice on my under quilts that I, I buy none of my top quilts have a hood none of them uh, I'm sure there are some out there but I don't use them I find just good headwear it works a treat in the hammock uh, beast from the east storm I was out minus 14 I only had one wool hat on that was it minus 14 uh, that is Celsius and um, 
you can watch that video actually if you haven't seen it and you can see the setup it wasn't this setup but it wasn't a million miles off either i bought a lot of different kit out with me for that camp so there you kind of rules of thumb try and avoid using the hoods i know it's tempting try not to get into your sleeping bag just open it right out use it as a quilt the benefits of having these double bags is I can trap a layer of warm air between the inner and outer bag without any concern at all. Now, my insulation only comes down to the back of my knees. In time, the back of my heels get cold. So inside my sleeping bag, I can put a little foam pad, a little sit pad just under my heels. You could even put your pack under your feet and that would work too if you don't want to carry a little bit of foam but I, I carry a little bit of foam uh, what about my calves between uh, the back of my knees and my feet that bit of my body just doesn't get cold if yours does the bigger bit of foam or use your pack it's easy so loads of people wanted to know about um, using sleeping bags in the hammock um, more of you wanted to know about the sheepskin have I stopped using it the only reason I don't use it is because I do have uh, other quilts um, which don't amount to a hell of a lot heavier or lighter than this surprisingly surprisingly lighter than you think my quilt is about 940 960 grams the sheepskin, 800 grams on its own without stuff sack, but it takes up a lot of volume in your pack. That's why I said have it on top of your pack or strap it underneath just like you would a roll pad. It's not really a big deal. So if you're on a budget, especially like I was when I first started, I couldn't conceive the idea of spending so much money on quilts. But I think get a taste for it with a cheap hammock. Um, a yoga pad, but especially if you have something like this and a two bag system, try with one. I don't think you'd be happy with it. This is what I'm taking out in a couple of weeks time just to prove to you that this is all you need. I've got three kilos with this bag and this bag. I've got 800 grams here, so I'm up to 3,800 grams. Um, the hammock itself is about 600 and I've got to say let's round it off for another two kilos for top and hardware for the hammock under six kilos for a system that isn't really designed for hammocking that's amazing keep your kit simple shelter insulation cook set don't think anything else and you will get away with big fat sleeping bags and big fat um, sheepskins like that the minute you start overthinking it your pack is gonna weigh a ton but try and avoid it on the analytics on my channel when I look there's not many of us that are under 25 so we're all over that 25 uh, bracket and some of us over the 40 bracket, a lot of us. So if you're in that sort of age bracket, along with me, aim to keep that pack light. This system here, the Fesca, um, I got pretty cheap, but you might already have two sleeping bags and sheepskin, either in the loft or in the dining room on the floor. And your missus doesn't have to know you've taken it, you know. And if you do get caught, you tell her I said it was all right. So cosy. Avoid the temptation to try and put all your hoods on also. But you see, there wouldn't be a baffle. So they're the things people wanted to know. How can I do it for cheap? What can I use? To get out the system, I unzip the outer and I don't have to unzip this big fat bag here, the winter bag. Then I can wander off for my 25th pay of the night.
get back in and everything is set up it doesn't need any readjustment for comfort you, you've already done it when we set it up but that is me done but when I do videos like this people will always want to comment why why don't you just buy under quilts instead it's because I have under quilts they're quite expensive and I'm only doing this to try and encourage or help people that have asked in the comments if I could do a video like this to aid them uh, who don't want to buy expensive under quilts especially if they're not going to like hammocking some people like it like I do some people perhaps just won't get used to it again try and avoid the expense where you can okay this is a warning if you try hammocking like this and you like it you could go down the road of getting yourself some quilts which i would avoid the synthetic ones and look at duck down or goose down even better it's a pricey road to go down but like i said in the analytics we're all of a certain age most of the viewers none of us are getting any younger it is a good little treat for you and you could be out nearly every weekend with a pretty light pack and simple to set up don't overcomplicate matters if, if you can okay i'll just stop here and show you this on the ground are these little imprints in the grass on there one there i think you counted eight this is where the deers lay down last night and made their bed there might be more than eight one two three four five six seven eight nine and these are very fresh so hopefully if i continue up this way and we do an overnight camp with the kit we could actually follow the deer up and over the hill and try and track them until next time take care of yourself and i will see you out there